Here's an interesting question for you. Do you know someone who is a control freak? A control freak is a person who has to take control of a situation or a task, even if they aren't involved in it. It's so annoying. A control freak always has to have control over what is happening. They always have to be in charge, even if the task is not their own. Oh, why do you have to be such a control freak? You always have to take over. It's a real pain in the neck. Here is something that isn't a pain in the neck, I hope. Coming up today, we have lots of things, lots of chat. You can get involved as well, as live as live can be. Mr. Steve will be here as well, and so will I. After all, it's just after two o'clock here in the UK. It's a Sunday afternoon, and this is Live English. Do, 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 do. Oh, are we back? Are we on again? <laughs> Did you miss me? I hope so. So here we go once again. Yes, we are live from Much Wenlock in England. Lots of people ask, where are you, Mr. Duncan? And this is the place I am broadcasting to you live from right now. Live from Much Wenlock in England the United Kingdom on a Sunday afternoon hi everybody this is Mr Duncan in England how are you today are you okay I hope so are you happy well are you happy or are you just pretending mm -hmm. I hope you are really happy today the weekend is here it is still Sunday the weekend hasn't finished just yet so you still have a few more hours of rest and relaxation so put your feet up relax enjoy some english for a sunday afternoon i hope you are super duper i'm okay but a very busy morning once again lots of things going on this week i'm busy making some new lessons for the <laughs> five hundred thousand people that don't realize i am making some new lessons at the moment i know that youtube still does not inform you when i put new lessons on so i am making some new lessons at the moment all about grammar thank you very much for your lovely messages during the week in response to my first lesson so i am making some new lessons to do with grammar and the reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of people have asked, Mr. Duncan, can you please make some grammar lessons? So that is what I have done. A new grammar lesson will appear once a week, every Wednesday, a new lesson. And of course, I am here. Well, you know when I'm here. Live English every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. So now you can write it down. There is something I want to mention first of all. Next month is a very busy month because it's the anniversary of my YouTube channel starting. Also next month we alter the time here. So we change the clocks which always causes confusion. So I will give you a warning before we turn our clocks is it forwards or backwards i think we i think we put the clocks forward in winter and back in the summer so the clocks will be going forward next month and it always causes so much confusion it really really does so lots of things coming up today i thought today we would have a mystery idiom <gasps> wow 
i know you can't believe it but yes we are going to have a mystery idiom and i will show you that a little bit later on also mr steve will be in the kitchen doing something that he does every single year and i will give you a little clue right now as to what it is so here is a little clue mr steve has been very busy once again in the kitchen <laughs> and he is doing something very special something that only happens at this time of year no it's nothing to do with halloween that's next month so what is mr steve up to and there is a little clue oh we were out yesterday by the way we we were outside having a lovely walk and we managed to spend a few moments with <laughs> what is left of the bulls and cows at the back of our house now there there was 11 there were actually 11 cows and bulls at the back of the house but now there is only four all of the rest of them they have all gone to market to be sold for slaughter i know it's horrible isn't it i don't like to think about it to be honest that's something we might talk about later on today because i watched a very interesting program the other night all about the meat trade now i am a person who loves eating meat i will be honest with you i do like eating meat but i have this strange conflict this strange conflict inside when i think about eating meat because i love animals but i also like eating meat and this is something that causes quite a lot of conflict in my mind so i love to see the animals i love to watch them and of course at the back of our house we often get lots of sheep and also we get lots of cattle but eventually they have to be taken away for slaughter and that is something i don't feel very comfortable with to be honest i don't feel very comfortable with that at all so there you can see mr steve yesterday we were walking and there we are near to the house and the cows and the bulls actually followed us they followed us down to the kissing gate and so we decided to give them some food but these particular cattle they are very young they are not very old but sadly eventually they will be taken away and they will be sold unfortunately which is something that to be honest with you i don't like to think of i really don't so here we go it is sunday i hope you are well and well how can i forget the live chat the live chat of course is on so let's see who is on the live chat right now shall we <gasps> there it is oh hello to the live chatters thank you very much for joining me on this sunday afternoon it is always nice to see you joining me live because of course you are giving up your time i give up some of my time but also you give up your time to watch me so i really really do appreciate that it is very kind of you so let's have a look the live chat is already very busy today so who was first on the live chat alam gear hello alam gear you are first today on the live chat so congratulations to you i suppose we should have a round of applause well done alam gear yeah and also pedro pedro you are second today now i'm feeling very generous today so i think i will also give a round of applause to pedro <laughs> mr steve is coming up later on by the way he is in a, a different place today he's gone traveling but where is he he will be reporting live from a very special place tias is here hello mr duncan also belarusia nice to see you back once again 
Chris is here as well blue thunder and also Garcia but uh, and uh, I men or e men yes it is a happy Sunday let's all be happy because life is too long to be miserable it really is hi everybody hi Mika Mika is here hello Mika it is nice to see you back now last week we were very concerned about Mika because Mika was not on the live chat but it turns out that Mika had actually gone away on holiday uh, for a working studying holiday in Ireland yes not very far away from me so kind of in the United Kingdom I'm not sure which part of Ireland or what part of Ireland Mika was at or in but we will find out a little bit later on so Mika if you want to tell us whereabouts in Ireland you were and maybe share some of your experiences you are more than welcome to do so today no problem also we have Anna hello Anna and also Saturino hello Saturino I haven't seen you for a very long time long time no see as we say in English Hoshino is here hello Hoshino nice to see you once again I believe you are watching in Japan another very dramatic week as far as the weather is concerned quite quite strong winds and t terrible storms taking place in the United States and also in the Philippines as well some very awful weather conditions taking place hi from Sujin in South Korea hello to South Korea <laughs> Pedro wants to talk about control freaks yes a person who is a control freak is someone who wants to take control of everything all the time and they can be quite annoying do you know any control freaks I know a couple of control freaks I'm not saying who <laughs> but sometimes one of them who isn't very far away from me at the moment can sometimes be a bit of a control freak so many comments as usual for the lovely mr duncan thank you very much thank you i amen for that jamelia is here hello jamelia nice to see you as well hi mr duncan i hope you are very well yes i'm not too bad thank you but very busy at the moment lots of things going on and we are preparing for the end of summer autumn is just around the corner in fact I can't believe I find it very hard to believe that we are almost halfway through in fact we are slightly more than halfway through September so just two more weeks of September and then we are into October my goodness and already on television they are talking about Christmas already I can't believe it <laughs> stop rushing me I think some of the control freaks are control more boats thank you Saturina for that Brazil is watching yes grammar sounds like grandma that is true <laughs> thank you Belarusia for that I'm glad someone has got the joke Rita I love your lessons about grammar thanks for all yes there are some more grammar lessons coming very soon so don't worry there are some more lessons coming there will be another one posted next Wednesday Mr Duncan why did you stop the lessons in the middle of the week because I am now making some new lessons so instead of doing the live stream on Wednesday I am now posting new lessons on Wednesday hi TS says Alan gear oh that's nice I like it when people talk to each other on the live chat it's very nice 
belarusia says oh i think mr steve is making some jam oh you might be right you might be right the captions on the screen are slightly delayed yes that's because they are live captions on the screen so they are slightly delayed this is something that youtube is experimenting with at the moment with the live streams they are now putting live subtitles but of course there is always a slight delay with the subtitles if you are watching live so there is a slight delay but at least you can see what i'm saying so i think that's a very good thing to be honest nct says love you from vietnam also eng is here hello from the middle of the desert oh i like the sound of that i bet it's nice and warm where you are today javier i am going to get an umbrella and go for a walk a lovely walk in the rain so you don't normally walk under the rain you normally walk in the rain so because the rain is all around you we say that you walk in the rain in the rain i am going for a walk in the rain i stayed out all afternoon in the rain and i got wet so we we normally say that you go out in the rain is mr steve a control freak um, yeah, sometimes sometimes maybe <laughs> is it healthy to eat a lot of meat i would say no mahabat i would say no i don't think it's healthy to eat a lot of meat of course you can eat some meat but the problem i have is that some people don't like to eat meat at all because they think that slaughtering animals is cruel so it is a very difficult subject to talk about some people get very passionate about that particular subject so it's always something that is on my mind i do eat meat but i don't eat as much meat as i used to i used to enjoy fast food hamburgers beef burgers hot dogs but now i don't eat any of those things i only eat meat now and again but i, I would love to eat no meat to be honest i would love to cut the meat out of my diet completely but to be honest with you i i do like eating meat if i ever see a piece of steak on a plate in front of me my mouth will always start to water so that is one of the problems i think meat tastes so delicious it is something i can't stop myself from doing but maybe one day maybe one day i will give up eating meat altogether what about you are you a vegetarian some people don't like to eat meat some people do some people like to eat a lot of meat in their culture maybe meat eating is very common so it depends really so i don't eat as much meat as i used to maybe once a week i have some meat but i think that's quite good to be honest but most of the time i eat vegetables or maybe dairy products and fish some people say that meat uh, fish is actually meat <laughs> well i think that's a debate for another time to be honest tias says i am an animal husbandry husbandry bachelor and i'm very familiar with livestock products Oh, i didn't know that i didn't know that i didn't know you were concerned with the the raising and care of animals i didn't know that cristiano says cattle is raised to be eaten i love beef well i suppose that is the point i made just i do like eating meat i don't know why blue thunder also says i am a big fan of meat as well 
I think people do eat meat uh, it's going to take a long time before people stop eating meat because to be honest with you it's so delicious it really is Hussein says the same thing it is so delicious so delicious Julia I love meat but I also love animals so I have the same problem as you Mr Duncan thank you Julia yes it is it is a bit of a paradox it is a problem that has no solution I suppose I could give up meat altogether but then I think I would feel a little unhappy because I would always think that I was missing out on something so yeah Chris says in the Philippines we eat chicken and pork Zekra says thank you very much for your chat with us oh thank you very much that's very kind of you what do you think about smoothie I'm not sure what that is sorry Javier I don't know what that is so we have the live chat up and running if you want to get involved you are more than welcome to we also have yes we have a mystery idiom today can you believe it we actually have a mystery idiom for you to solve shall I show it to you now okay here it comes here is today's mystery idiom can you see it it is on the screen it is a well-known expression in English all you have to do is tell me what it is we have mr. Steve coming very soon but where is he he is somewhere different today <laughs> he has some very special idioms coming up today yes I thought today we would do a few random idioms because I do get lots of people writing to me asking can we have some more idioms on your live streams so mr. Steve has very kindly offered to read out and explain some common idioms in the English language so I hope you enjoy that coming up later on what else do we have coming well we also have an excerpt from one of my full English lessons would you like to see it now okay then and then after this we will say hello to mr. Steve do you know what a buzzword is do you ever use buzzwords a buzzword is a word or phrase that is seen as being common and contemporary a fashionable phrase or word is a buzzword for example right now the word empower or empowerment is used a lot to empower is to give someone the strength or motivation to do something for themselves or to give someone a sense of independence and self-worth to empower the young or the poor to empower women to offer empowerment to those who are in need of help it would be safe to say that empower is indeed a buzzword for this period of time Can you see what I'm doing here I appear to be running but I'm not moving anywhere I'm running on the spot to run on the spot means that you are actively doing it while staying in one place you can walk on the spot you can jump on the spot in these cases the spot is the place we are doing these things on the word spot can be used in other ways too you can be put on the spot this means that you have been placed in an awkward situation with no warning for example if a person asks you a question you were not expecting we can say that they have put you on the spot to find yourself in a situation that is hard to deal with we can say that you are 
on the spot. Then there is in the spotlight. To be in the spotlight means to be the centre of attention. Something is being watched carefully. To scrutinise something or someone is to put it under the spotlight. We can also spot something. This means to notice or see something. To spot someone in the street means that you notice them. You have spotted them. I spotted a woodpecker in my garden yesterday. You can also go spotting, for example, train spotting or bird spotting. This means that you are looking out for one particular type of thing, perhaps an unusual design of train or a rare bird. Of course, a spot can also be a mark on your skin, a circular blemish or unusual bump on your skin can be called a spot. Teenagers tend to get spots. Some animals have spots. In fact, if you look carefully, you will find that there are spots everywhere. <coughs> Do you ever renege? Are you a person who sometimes reneges on a deal? The word renege is a verb that means to go back on your word or to change your mind after agreeing to do something. You say yes to something, then later you change your mind. So you renege on your promise. To renege is to break your word and go back on your promise. You have had a change of heart. So the thing you said you would do has changed. We thought the deal was on, but then he came in this morning and reneged on it. The word renege originated in Latin and in its original form meant forcibly deny. Do, 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 do. It is Sunday afternoon and it's Mr. Duncan. That's me, by the way. And I'm live now on YouTube to the world via the Internet. Isn't it amazing what technology can do? We are having something special today. We have a special exchange program taking place and we have someone from Russia here. Can you believe it? And Mr. Steve right now is reporting to us live from Russia so now I think we can go live can we go live to Russia Mr Steve Mr Steve in Russia Mr Steve can you hear me yes I can Mr Duncan I can hear you very well how are you I'm okay thank you oh I'm very excited uh, Mr Duncan because I'm here in Russia just a quick short trip uh, doing a bit of sightseeing as you can see here I've come along to see the, the famous um, Basil Cathedral uh, in uh, in Moscow. Oh yes, that looks like St Basil's. St Basil's, yes, and of course the reason I've come here is because on this very short trip, I'm only here a few hours, uh, because I wanted to see the famous domes, uh, which are the, the, the first time that there's ever been domes on any buildings. And that red paint, as you can see, is very, very special. And I've come all the way here just to see that. And the paving stones. It's fascinating. It's uh, oh, what a wonderful place this is, Mr. Duncan. Yes, I'm not doing anything here apart from just some simple sightseeing. <laughs> it looks great. You you look great. It's very red. I, I like the way you are wearing your, your red T-shirt. Yeah, oh, yes. I've, well, I wanted to match the building, you see. Uh, <laughs> and uh, oh, who's that over there? Yes. I'm not uh, looking out for anyone in particular. Yes. I think they're the people I want. I mean, the 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 the, uh, the, the tour guides that I'm uh, with <laughs> that just went over there, Mr. Duncan. Yes, so, I asked just a bit of random sightseeing and no no uh, no subversive reason for me going here at all. Subversive. <laughs> 
I like that word. Subver subversive, yes. Subversive. Yes, underhanded. Yes, not to disguising what I'm really doing. See, I'm getting a bit of English in already, even though I'm thousands of miles away in Russia. And that particular cathedral is very beautiful, by the way. It's a beautiful cathedral. I think it's one of the most famous landmarks in Russia. And it's situated in Red Square. Did you know, Steve, that that building was seriously damaged during the Great Fire? There was a big fire, a great fire that took place in Red Square. And St Ooh. Basil's Cathedral was badly damaged. But they, they actually restored it afterwards. When did that happen, Mr. Duncan? Oh, I think that was, or oh, maybe it, maybe a hundred, a couple of hundred years ago, a long time ago. Sounds a bit like the Great Fire of London, but it was a Great Fire of Moscow, perhaps. So, so are you sampling any of the Russian food? Uh, well, I've, I've no, not yet. I don't think I'll be here long enough for that, really. I just wanted to come and do a bit of sightseeing, you know. <laughs> and uh, and just I might go off into the suburbs, you know, around a few houses, see how people live. You know uh, what? For no particular reason whatsoever. You should you should look up Mr. Vodka. You you might um, you might be able to find Mr. Vodka. Really? Oh, I don't know where he lives. He could be here. We know he's in Russia. Uh, and uh, well, maybe I can pick up some tips. You yes. know, and about uh, what's really going on here, Mr. Duncan. Yes. Uh, oh, there's some uh, people over there. I need to go and see. <laughs> That's amazing. But it, it, it's a very good signal as well, by the way, from Russia. Isn't it amazing what technology can do? Well, I'm using uh, my own satellite, Mr. Duncan. Oh, I see. Yes. Or should I say it's the Hat for Rent satellite? Oh, I see. So, so n not not a secret government satellite. No, nothing like that at all, Mr. Duncan. No, no. no. You do seem yeah. to be you do seem to be very interested in what's going on around you. Well, you, you, this is just a standard sort of binoculars that you use on holiday, Mr. Duncan. Are you sure? You know, you, you wouldn't use them for any other reason. I'm starting. You? I'm starting to wonder what's going on here. I'm not sure if Mr. Steve is actually a secret spy. Secret spy, I don't what you're talking about, Mr. Duncan. No, I'm just here to see the sights. That's all. I've come uh, thousands of miles. I'm just going to stay about 12 hours and I'm going to come all the way back again because I've always wanted to see uh, this wonderful uh, cathedral. Oh, Tomek uh, says, Tomek is here on the live chat. He says, it was the great fire during Napoleon's campaign. Nap I, I guess that must be Napoleon. <laughs> ah, I'm not sure if it's oh, Napoleon's. Yes. I think old uh, Napoleon it, got himself into Russia. 1812. I wonder when the Great Fire of London was. I'm not sure that that was much later. I think that was, was no, it? that was earlier. I think so, it was earlier. Yes, yes. That was, I think that it was, was much earlier. earlier. Yes. But yes, <laughs> probably probably bringing up facts is probably not a good idea, Steve. What are you doing? You seem very interested in something. No, nothing at all. No, no. I'm just making sure that, you know, I'm not caught. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm uh, you know, just enjoying everything. <laughs> uh, a very, yes. Ah, oh, Mr. Duncan, right. Yes. Um, anyway, I, I've just got to go and do something. Really? And uh, and then I'm just going to get straight on a plane and uh, come all the way back to England. So you will be joining me in the studio in a few moments after you've you've flown all the way back to England. Yes, after I've just visited uh, uh, this housing estate uh, just outside uh, uh, Moscow. And then I shall be uh, not doing anything there, really. I've just got a few friends to see. Uh, and then I'll be straight on the next plane back yes. and, uh, you know, uh, hopefully get uh, some protection from my local government. Uh, yes, yes. Mm, right. I, I think someone's coming, Mr. Duncan. I've got to go. Um, I can't see you much longer. I'm going to be seen. And not that that matters because I'm just on holiday. <laughs> I'm, I'm I don't think they've got many cameras uh, around the streets of Moscow. I've noticed there aren't that too many. So maybe I won't be caught on any CCTV cameras uh, walking off into the suburbs. Yes. Apparently da Danilo says it's boring. What's boring? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Well, what. we'll have to liven things up later, Mr. Duncan. Well, I will take all of my clothes off later on. So just for you, we will both get naked later. So thank you, Danilo, for your lovely, lovely compliment there. And Mr. Steve, you are you are looking very radiant today. Yeah, it, what's the weather like? Because you don't seem to be wearing much clothing. No, it's quite warm here. You'd think it'd be cold in Russia, but it's not. It's uh, it's quite warm. Uh, although I did forget my coat, so uh, 
Never mind. I'll. Uh, I'll. I, I think I need to get on the on the plane now, Mr. Duncan, okay. uh, because I'm going to miss it. I think it goes in about uh, two hours. Okay. So then I've only got an hour left to do what I've come here to really do. I mean to do, which is take lots of pictures. You're going to be uh, back in two hours. Well, we won't be on then. Uh, I don't know. Well, I might. Uh, well, I, Mr. Duncan, I I don't know. We'll just have to work it out somehow. <laughs> Right, I'm off, Mr. Duncan. See you later, Mr. Steve. We're losing the signal. We're losing the signal. Are we? Right, yes, can't hear you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's gone now. Mr. Steve is gone. So Mr. Steve is coming back to the studio now. He's going to jump on a plane and come straight back. Don't forget, you're, st you're still live on the microphone <laughs> before you start banging everything around. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, I, I had doubts about doing that bit. I really did and and I, I can see now that my doubts were definitely justified so mr. Steve will be here something else we've been doing we've been making jam would you like to see in the garden because at the moment in the garden there is lots and lots of damsons damsons on the tree and there you can see our special damson cam the damson cam is live and you can see there are lots of damsons on the tree. Mr. Steve is now making jam. And I thought it would be fun before Mr. Steve comes back here to join us live in the studio. I thought it would be fun to have a look at something we did last year. <laughs> Welcome to Mr. Duncan's garden. Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve with you on a Sunday afternoon. And here we are now in the garden and something very interesting is taking place. Something is occurring in the garden, but what could it be? Well, if you look in the distance, you will see Mr. Steve is up to something, but what is he doing? Let's, let's take a close look and see just what Mr. Steve is doing. Hello, hello there. What am I doing? I'm picking fruit. Or to be more precise, damsons. I'm going to make something with them, with those bags of sugar that we looked at in last week's lesson. And I'm going to make some jam. J-A-M jam. There we go. I need a few more of those. I need six pounds and uh, there's not much left on here. Because six, I... six pounds sounds like a lot. That's, I don't know what that is in kilograms, but it's, uh, it's, it's going to probably come halfway up this bucket. And that's what we need. Now, I've already given quite a few of these away to the neighbours because they like to make jam as well. So I thought I'd give some to them, but I haven't left much for myself. Plus, it's getting late in the season now, and the fruit is going a little off. So this is the first bit we pick the fruit. This is the this is the boring bit, really. I tell you, there's a lot of spiders in this tree. I just found a spider on my arm before you came out. So there we go. I'm frantically trying to pick this as quick as I can. You frantic. 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 That's, frantic. that's a great that's a great word, Mr. Quickly. Steve. Frantic. If you do something frantically, it means you do it in a rush or in a hurry. Rush. There we go. I'm doing this in a rush because it's going to be dark soon and I want to make this before the tea tonight and it takes quite a long time to make jam. We don't want that one in there. Ugh. That's been chewed at by a wasp, so that one's going. I must admit, I do admire your quality control, Mr. Steve. You have, you have a very high standard of quality control. This fruit is definitely very ripe. You can, of course, you don't have to make this into jam. You can just eat them. I won't because I haven't washed these. I could eat that, but I won't because there might have been a, a few insects crawling over there. Uh, I've got to be there careful. might there might be a bit of insect poop 
on, on the damson. So always wash the fruit. Never, never pick fruit from the tree and then eat it. So I, I, always think, I always think it's a good idea to wash the fruit first before you eat it. So Mr. Steve, after you've picked the damsons, what, what happens next? Just give us a clue as to what happens next. Well, I'll show you what happens next. Well, I think people can probably guess. We have to wash the fruit. That's the next thing we're going to do. Okay, Mr. Steve, tell us now what are we doing here? I'm going to weigh the fruit to see if we've got enough. There we go. So that now, we don't want that. That's not going to make the, uh, the jam very tasty. So now we're going to put it in the water. Take out all these leaves. Yes, I'm going to go and see if I can get it. I want that to go up to there. I want six pounds altogether. So I'm going to go back outside to see if I can find a few more. Join us later on for the next stage of Mr. Steve's Jam making. Do, 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 do. We will take another look at Mr. Steve's jam making later on. Do, do it is a Sunday and we are live on YouTube at this very moment and don't forget you can catch us live every Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time every Sunday just once a week now don't forget new lessons coming on Wednesday here he is can you see it's Mr. Steve he's back already oh my goodness yes Hello. all the way from Russia just to do some sightseeing nothing else nothing else you nothing else at all i can't help feeling that you are being a little suspicious yes i think we're, uh, we're, we're well i think people know maybe what we're referring to we're just having a little joke a little bit of a laugh uh aren't we <laughs> <laughs> uh, based on uh, something that happened over here yes you don't have to explain uh, i think people uh, understand People all seem to like me making the jam, Mr. Duncan, because quite a few people have referred to it. And they're right, I am making dams and jam again. It's that time of the year. Dams and jam. You were busy this morning. Now, the video that we're showing is from last year. But, of course, you do this every year. And this morning you were busy in the kitchen. Two hours <laughs> slaving by the cooker. Two hours. Now, some people might be mistaken for thinking that this is my normal supply of sugar for me just for a week because because i know that i do eat a lot of sugar but can i just say that this is not my supply of sugar this is not the amount of sugar that i eat each week for those who are thinking of saying that so mr steve very very busy and making his jam and just to prove it here is what remains of the damsons that you made the jam with this morning so you can see lots of stones so you call you call the middle of the damson a stone that's right that that's the seed really in the middle it's yes it's somebody described damson as a plum yes it's a, i think it is a type of plum mm. it's a, a dark fruited plum with a with a with a, a slightly bitter taste compared yes. to most plums yes plums t normally taste quite sweet or, or or they certainly don't taste bitter but to be honest with you i, I don't like eating damsons they're quite acidic yes very very tangy very acidic and they're, bitter yes they're not very popular they used to be quite popular but they're not anymore uh people traditionally make jam with it because when once you've added sugar to it uh then obviously it's a lot sweeter uh but my mother used to uh because we had a damson tree when i grew up where we live they're quite popular in the uk and she we used to pick the damsons make jam with it but also she would uh, stew it boil it uh in a saucepan with sugar 
and then we'd have it with uh, custard mm. uh, and it was it was lovely yeah and we'll have a look later on at mr steve making the jam again so we had part one and part two will be on your screens very very soon and they used to use damsons apparently for uh, uh, as dye the dark yeah. red purpley dye that comes out of the skins was used for uh, for dyeing cloth oh okay then apparently yes because I think it would be quite a nice colour and not not dissimilar to your your T-shirt, your shirt you're wearing today. This could have been dyed with damsons. How do that, for all I know? That looks amazing. I love your T-shirt. I love that top. Bought this years ago and I've never ever worn it. This yes. is the first time I've ever worn it. I might steal that. Nope. I might I might steal that from Mr. Steve's wardrobe. It won't fit you, Mr. Duncan. Yes, it will fit me. I don't think it will. What are you saying? We, well, we know that you need to, you know, lose a few pounds. Here we go again. You know, mm. I'm nice and slim, I think. I don't want you to stretch it out. Well, this... You know, make it big and then it'll hang all loose on me then. This T-shirt <laughs> that I'm wearing at the moment is, is small. That's the size. It's small. Now, the, earlier on, I was talking about eating meat because yesterday we, we went to see the lovely cows and the bulls at the back of the house and there we are again you can see them now i have a slight dilemma a slight problem because i like eating meat but i also like animals as well and, and there is a problem now we used to eat a lot of meat i think you and i used to eat quite a lot of meat years ago we always had some some sort of food that had meat in it but but these days i don't think we eat as much meat as we used to i think we've tried to cut down haven't we we have definitely um but a lot of people i was noticing on the live chat were saying that they eat a lot of meat and they like meat uh i think certain countries uh, in turkey i noticed somebody saying that they eat a lot of meat in turkey well of course there's there's kebab there's the special kebab which originated in turkey and of course, they uh, America. They eat a lot of meat in America. <gasps> yes, uh, huge, great steaks. Now, I would take uh, the risk here. I would take a risk and say that probably the United States is probably one of the biggest consumers of meat in the world. Right, they could. They quite possibly are. Uh, I think vegetarianism is growing, but it tends to be. Uh, in certain countries or, or certain certain people I, I i don't think meat eating is 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 in any risk of dying out no that that's the point i made earlier i don't i don't see in, in the future that, that there will be no one eating meat on the planet i think there will always be a large number of people who will enjoy eating meat and i count myself as one of them i would love to be a vegetarian i would love to just eat vegetables and fruit and and maybe the occasional dairy product but to be honest with you i do like the taste of meat if you ever give me a steak and it's funny you mentioned turkey not the meat but the country because when we went to turkey i had one of the most amazing steaks ever yes that i've ever eaten in my life it was the most amazing steak absolutely gorgeous and I will never forget that to this very day. I always remember that amazing steak that I had in Turkey. Yes, because if you have a steak over here in the UK, it tends to be a bit tough. Mm. I've, I've done the I've Very rarely have I been anywhere and had a what you call a decent steak, a, a very good steak where the butter you just cut through the butter, uh, cut through the, the meat like butter. Whereas we went all the way to Turkey had a steak and it was the nicest meat the most tenderest meat i've ever tasted in my life so they're obviously experts in turkey at, at uh, producing a good steak <laughs> i'm trying to find a picture at the moment of of a steak I, I i did actually put it into my computer and let's have a look see if we can find it <laughs> i think that the the thing with being a vegetarian is it, it's it's uh, uh, a lot of people do it because they they don't want to think about uh, killing animals but if you are going to go vegetarian i think you've got to be you've got to know what you're doing because you've got to eat a large variety of of, of non-meat foods in order that you get all the uh, the vit vitamins minerals and proteins that your body needs 
it's it's uh, more difficult to be healthy as a vegetarian uh, probably than a meat eater because you get a lot of protein and a lot of vitamins from meat which you've got to replace with vegetables and vegetable products which tend to be lower in their concentrations of, uh, of vitamins and you've got to mix you've got to know what you're doing to get the right proteins because uh, for example you can't just eat rice uh, because that only contains certain amino acids yes and so uh, so it all comes down to nutrition it all comes down to a, having a balanced diet uh, rice and lentils which is a very popular combination in uh, in uh, India uh, contains a lot of all the essential proteins that you need but of course you eat any meat chicken beef pork anything you've got all the protein you need but with vegetables you've got to know what you're doing otherwise you could become malnourished over a period of time it doesn't sound like uh, fun no and, and when you go out to restaurants in the uk it's very difficult to find uh, a restaurant that serves good vegetarian food that isn't just basically pasta with a few tomatoes thrown in it. There's quite a few people at work um, who are vegetarian. And uh, when they have the vegetarian option, uh, which is probably only maybe one in 10, maybe one in 20 people, uh, probably vegetarian in the UK, certainly in our company, and uh, they always get, a, they, they're never happy with the meal that they get in a hotel. No. Because it tends to be either vegetable pasta, <laughs> some kind of, it tends to just be vegetable pasta. Yeah, that's interesting. That that's all they ever get. That's very interesting because if you go to places now that you, you often find that there are more vegetarian meals on the menu, more vegetarian meals than actual meat eating meals if that makes sense well then you've got the complication that some people are vegetarians but they're also vegans so they won't eat uh, dairy products i always well. I re <laughs> so that's very difficult to to be healthy and be a vegan i used to think that a vegan was was, a, was someone someone from another planet well you're thinking of vulcan mr duncan am i <laughs> yeah i think so let's have a look at a piece of meat so this is the problem this is the problem that I have. So the animals look lovely and cute. But then, of course, you have the delicious meat. <sighs> so you've got meat and you've got animals. Meat. Animals. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I think. But that's we... the. I'm just trying to, to, to make the point. The yes. point is that is it, isn't it? The problem is I like both of these things, but it, it's a it's a kind of paradox because I love to see these animals in the field but I also like to sit in a restaurant and eat this see when you're when you're <laughs> in a restaurant you don't really think too much about the animal because you can't see it it's not like they're bringing a cow to your table no and then you know killing it in front of you ah yes that's a very good point because I don't like to eat food that has a face so I don't like to stare at the food that I'm eating and, and have it look back at me with its eyes a bit like in China when they used to serve the fish on the plate and the fish would still have the head uh, and the one of the eyes would always be looking at you and, and the fish would always look very sad on the plate <laughs> as if it's saying why why did you why did you kill me why, why do you want to eat me? I always f used to feel very guilty when I, when I looked into the eye of the fish on the plate. And I don't like prawns for the same reason. Mm. Prawns, uh, are, prawns are disgusting. I don't like prawns or, or shellfish. They're full of poo. Uh, anybody who's ever ill, uh, if you go to a restaurant, you can bet nine times out of ten they've had prawns or shellfish or some, uh, or some kind of seafood um, no we, we I think if you're a meat eater you most people don't you don't like to see the any evidence that it was once a live animal no you want it you want it to be wrapped in plastic and it's just a big square piece of meat mm. and then you don't you don't know where it comes from let's have a look at the live chat I can tell mr. Steve wants to look at the live <laughs> chat uh, 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 Danilo is getting very hungry showing at that state Anna there has made a good point that's what I'm trying to say if you're vegetarian you have to assume different you have to have different combinations of 
cereals and legumes and all sorts of things to get the, all the all the types of proteins that you need can i just ask so you can't be a lazy vegetarian or, or, or long term you'll, you'll be sick can i just ask a very ignorant question what is a legume legume is like uh, peas pea, a pea is a legume oh. peas and uh, beans uh uh, it, it's something where the, uh, the uh, uh, underground they've got um, a, a special type of root. Oh, okay. Uh, a pea. I'm, I'm sure a pea is a legume. Ah, peas, bean, great green beans, so things mm. like that. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. See, I, I'm learning things today. I learned something new. Isn't that nice? Yes, so yes, it's fine to be vegetarian. I think you can be. Uh, see, I, I I'll eat meat, but just say once or twice a week, and I don't. I haven't got a problem really with animals being killed, as long as they've had a good life. So, like the cows behind us, have uh, had a good life. You know, they've they've been in a nice field. Yes, and uh, after all, we we do have teeth. We are omnivores. Yes, we, we eat both so meat and vegetables. We are, which some people would say is just an excuse, really, because now that we're civilised, should we be, uh, should we be uh, killing and eating animals? I mean, I don't like to look at those lovely cows and then think that they can have a bolt through their head yes. in a few weeks' time, and like, then I could possibly be eating it. That's it. We might be eating those little, those little cows, those little bulls, rather, because normally it's the males that they slaughter, not the females. And that's that brings me to the point that I made earlier. I actually watched a program the other night about the the dairy industry. So all of the the, the milk producers and they, they dispose of the males because they, they are surplus. They don't need them. And the problem is to get milk from a cow. It must have a calf. It must have a baby it must have a young to raise so it will produce milk and that's the problem so the males are, are surplus they are not needed and here in the UK and this is another thing I wanted to mention there is a certain type of meat called veal yes. which, which here is is not popular people don't like to eat veal but in Europe veal is very popular and by veal I mean the baby the baby cow so very young they they slaughter them and you get the meat force feed them so they they normally force feed them they feed feed the milk very very creamy milk and then the, the meat is very light and ev even sweet I think I've never I've never eaten veal to be honest I've never tried it no uh, and of course it, uh, as, as people point out you can as long as you know what you're doing you can have a very healthy life as a vegetarian uh, I mean, uh, Indians, most of Indians are, are vegetarian uh, because uh, if you're a Hindu, uh, then you, you will be vegetarian. Mm, this is it. Uh, and uh, of course, over the many hundreds and years and thousands of years, they've worked out uh, the best, the right combinations of foods to eat to keep mm. healthy. And it is basically if you combine rice and lentils together, that provides all the protein that you need practically mm. so and that of course is a staple diet of yes. of, 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 of of indian food uh, so yes i mean millions and millions of people in india hindus are, are vegetarian i think all hindus are vegetarian i think i'm right in that someone yes. please correct me if i'm wrong and it gets even more complicated than that because then you have in certain cultures or religions you have you have animals that can't be eaten or won't be eaten so so I think in India the cow for example so beef isn't served and then you have other countries so maybe countries that are Islamic countries and they won't serve pork or eat pork so so it just depends doesn't it it depends I suppose where you go in the world but the problem is I, I have these very sharp teeth on either side of my mouth and they are they are for tearing meat so that's the reason why I think I think that's the reason why when I look in the mirror I see my big sharp teeth I and you just want to bite into some meat Mr. Duncan yes, is I, what you're saying I just want to bite into a into a lovely big delicious 
piece of meat like that look at oh look at that mm, it's making my mouth water outside by the way we are talking about other things today including damsons there it is we have the damson cam and you can see the damsons on the tree mr steve has been very busy making his damson jam yes i made it this morning and we are now going to take a look at something you did last year when you were picking and making your damson jam we will have a look at that right now <laughs> So, Mr. Steve, we seem to be at a very interesting stage of the process. We're cooking at the fruit. I'm cooking the damsons. Here we go. They're simmering away nicely, bubbling away there, gently cooking. We just need to soften the fruit. Who would have thought that Mr. Duncan's English show would turn into a cookery show and we would be showing your viewers how to make jam but there we go we are it's cooking nicely it's got about another need to cook it for about half an hour i've got two on the go here i've got two saucepans going here should have should have these aren't proper jam making saucepans but they'll do so we've got about another 15 minutes to go while the fruit softens it's very messy and uh, then we'll come back to you when i add the sugar which was the clue from last week's show so that's got to go in there when the fruit is cooked so we'll see you in about 15 minutes mr duncan that's very nice and also the word simmer if something simmers it means it cooks very slowly without getting too hot that's right a low heat a simmer a very low heat it means it's just bubbling away cooking very gently and you could say that if somebody, you can use that expression to describe someone's behavior, if their anger is simmering away. It's bubbling, something is bubbling away or simmering. simmering. So it's not boiling, it's not too hot, it's just cooking steadily, yeah. just like Mr. Steve's damsons are right now. <laughs> Welcome back to Making Jam with Mr. Steve. And this is where we add the sugar. So here we go. I've got to put three pounds of sugar in here. Slowly. Probably shouldn't do it as quickly as that, but uh, that was two pounds. So I've got to add another pound. This is where it gets exciting. There we go. That'll do. Stir a bit more in. Probably a professional cook would say that I've done that too quickly. So that's... We'll turn that up a bit, but not yet. Because I've got to add three pounds of sugar to the other one. Not a good stir. Look how messy it's getting in here already. Need to add a, another pound of sugar into there. Or 425 grams. At this moment, the jam is what? Is it, is it completely cooked or do you have to cook it for a further amount of time? What does it say here? Add the sugar and stir and boil rapidly. Uh, but what happens at this point is all the stones start to come out of the fruit. There's one of the hard stones from the fruit and I will show you a quick way of how to remove those stones later so when this is boiling away we'll come back and uh, I'll remove the stones using my quick method so Mr Steve has a has a magic method of removing all of the stones from from the fruit 
as it's cooking. So we will have a look at that later on. Yes, we will. Do, 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 do. It is a Sunday afternoon. Mr. Steve is already starting to go to sleep. I'm not. You're feeling a bit tired. I'm he, wide awake, Mr. Duncan. He was standing here just yawning, yawning his head off. I'm tired from making all that jam. I had to stand on my feet. It takes two hours. Well, you've, you've had a busy morning. You had a you, busy morning, and now I'm standing again. You went to Russia. True. You were yes. You were in Russia at the start of the show at the start of your live segment so yes it's, it's lots of stuff going on you wanted to mention something about Russia didn't you as well oh yes uh, on the news uh, this week uh, Russia and China are doing some joint military exercises and they're calling it uh, Vostok mm. which is the name of your watch so so the, the manufacturer of this watch is Vostok and the name Vostok is also used to describe the military practice the when when they practice and when they have these exercises they get their guns and their tanks I think they just called it that I think it was just like east I don't think I think it I don't think it referred oh no I didn't say it did yes they just called it that which I thought was a coincidence yes I didn't I didn't say it was anything to do with the watch or east I just said that I think we <laughs> yeah, they just called it the, the Vostok, uh, <laughs> didn't they? They just Did called it the Vostok Maneuvers or something. That's it. Vo well, well they, called it Vos they call it Vostok 2018. That's it. But, that's it. But doesn't Vostok mean East? Yes. In Russia. That's it. That's it. That's it, so yes. That's, that's cleared that one up. For a moment, I thought I'd blanked out. I thought maybe I'd gone unconscious for a few moments and, and was saying things that I didn't know about. So you're going to give us some idioms in a few moments. But first of all, you were away this week, weren't you? Yes. So you've been away. And during one of your your dinners, one of your conferences, someone was there drawing pictures. Yes. And and they, they actually drew a picture of you, didn't they? Yes, it was an artist. Yes. And there was probably about a hundred of us there at work, all having a meal in the evening. And they'd employed an artist to uh, walk around the tables uh, to do caricatures. To draw. Of people. So caricatures. So to do a sort of uh, a cartoon type uh, representation of the person. Caricature. Yeah. So not, not what they actually look like, but an exaggerated... Uh, form That's uh, a humorous uh, version of them so normally with a caricature you normally take the features of a person's face and you normally make make it look more apparent you so exaggerate you, their features you exaggerate their features yes i think that's a good a bit way like of, those two behind us slightly so yeah, so they're the, caricatures so these are kind of caricatures but they're very flattering they're nice so we we both look quite nice and cute and by the way, that these were actually made by someone in Russia. So, so mm -hmm. one of our Russian viewers actually made made these pictures for us. Very nice. But back to your story. The other night, someone drew a picture of you. Now, would you like to show us the drawing? Now, because, I would. They said, "Oh, look, here's here's a. Uh, hope you like your caricature." Because normally they they draw the front of your face, don't they? They yes. they draw your face. So, so imagine my horror uh, <laughs> when they presented this to me. <laughs> oh, that, that deserves a round of applause. Wait there a second. Round of applause. So the person had been uh, drawing me from the back. So, so that wasn't the front of your face. That's actually the back of your head. So, and they uh, said uh, that's your best view. It's very similar. It's very, very My best view. Could, could, do, you want, do you want to do a comparison? Here we go. So we're just going to compare. Oh yeah, that's very good. 
isn't isn't that good yes i think that's that's very good yes very 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 lifelike not very flattering but but flattering but not you very but flattering. you said some of the other people were, were also very upset by their pictures everyone was upset yes so sometimes <laughs> when, when a person draws your caricature they take all of your things and they they exaggerate them so maybe your nose is slightly large so they will make your nose really large because it's part of your character so hence the name caricature it is highlighting the characteristics of your face so yes i thought that was it made me giggle to be honest would you I like was not too pleased shall i have another look at the live chat go on there it is ah oh. <laughs> what <laughs> it uh, made olga laugh just <laughs> but she's apologizing i don't mind i don't mind being bald i've got used to it after so many years you are a good sport yes i am has somebody said that no i said that <laughs> <laughs> yes so i was not too pleased at the time but i'd had one or two uh drinks so i wasn't too uh, too upset about it i i to be honest with you i th i think you escaped i did because actually some of the people looked hideous yes. one woman she looked like a a witch Ooh. they made her look like a witch go on which one um i'm not going to say who it was <laughs> she was on my table and she was oh. quite upset about it okay that that narrows uh, it down wait, just go back up again mr duncan somebody's asked me that's it Stay back up 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 that's it uh, jamila says i like your new t-shirt mr steve oh yes it's very nice it's very red it's it's to celebrate mr steve going to russia today because he was in moscow earlier in red square i've actually had this red t-shirt for many years and i have never worn it sometimes you buy things don't you uh, you see something and you think oh that's nice i'll buy that and then when you get it home you have doubts about whether it looks good on you mm. so now i've had compliments from jamila i will wear it again javier or javier likes my smiley face t-shirt i think you can buy this particular t-shirt not this one in particular because I, I, i've had this for over 10 years hyper washed acid icon yes yeah, so so this particular symbol has been around for many years and over the years it has had many different meanings mm. some of them happy and some of them a little not so happy and not so legal dare well, i maybe say you should uh, think about uh, whether you should be wearing that mr duncan <laughs> it's fine but well nowadays of course it doesn't mean anything it just means happy smiley face just like me rosa said did i go to russia to buy a watch from mr duncan <laughs> uh, well uh, mr duncan's watch i bought from here in the uk but i expect it came from lithuania and yes. someone was on from lithuania earlier oh really I, I'm, I'm no I, uh, maybe i got it wrong oh uh, i think somebody was on from lithuania oh ah, okay then I, I tell you who i who i would like to hear from today is is mika remember last week we were very concerned about mika and apparently mika went to ireland did she so mika came to the united kingdom and didn't come to visit us didn't come here to visit us for a cup of tea but mika did have something she had a hot cross bun did she yes a hot cross how bun. did you hear about this mr duncan yes well mika mika wrote to me and told me oh how lovely so we were very concerned and apparently mika found out that we were really worried last week because of all the terrible weather that was occurring we in were. in japan so yeah there's thought... been an earthquake apparently in japan somebody mentioned earlier as well oh and there's bad weather all over the place they've got a hurricane in america yeah and i heard on the news today in china they've got some i think they've got a hurricane in china as well yes so. ho uh, over hong kong at the moment but but this right. is typhoon season and hurricane season yes. so it, every year at this time of year there are lots of typhoons lots of hurricanes mm. also the, in the philippines they are having terrible floods terrible floods everywhere and many people are losing their lives as well which is really really awful thank you hasner who says i'm bald but handsome oh you can be bald and handsome i think so i think i am yeah. uh and uh jordeo uh jordeo jones yeah says i'm getting bald presumably you mean i'm going bald yes 
oh my god what can i do yes well, well just enjoy it the answer is you can't really do anything i suppose you could you could do there are ways of course around it you could wear a wig don't wear a wig to pay don't or, or if you've got lots of money you can have a hair transplant yes but really really so you have the hair some of the hair at the back of your head they take it out and they put it at the front of your head or or maybe they take it from another part of your body so those so then you will have very curly hair <laughs> the answer uh, the answer Giordano is that I started going bald when I was in my early 20s so mm -hmm. anybody any men there who are going bald watching and they're maybe getting a bit down maybe getting a bit depressed or upset about it uh, the answer actually I found was I spent many years trying to disguise it uh, in the end I just shaved it all off that's it and I'll tell you something that was the best day of my life one of the best days of my life because suddenly I was free from the worry of having to worry about where the wind was blowing my hair is it going to expose a ball I was growing it a bit longer and trying to cover up bald patches well, well some some people they, they they sort of they, they grow the hair at the side and then they comb it so they comb it over the top to try and hide it but I didn't that, do that but, but that, uh, that just looks worse yes you've got to come to a point where you accept it and then uh, just cut your hair very short ah that's interesting Mariam has said there is another way to solve baldness and that is micro pigmentation now I've heard ah. of that and they actually tattoo they actually put small black dots on your head so they put them there permanently ah. so like tiny tattoos so they put them there so it looks as if you have hair but it's short so it looks as if you've cut your hair short but you still have the tiny little dots on your head so it looks like you've just shaved your head but you still have the hair there so that's quite interesting but the problem is of course maybe maybe at some point you don't want it and you can't get rid of it so you've got these permanent things on your head I can tell you one thing nothing works <laughs> don't bother don't bother buying anything to rub on your head there's no miracle it, none of them work I've yeah. tr I tried all of them can I just say if there was a cure for baldness we would all be using it including uh, there's a there's a chemical there's a there's a drug uh, quite expensive as well that you can get um, minoxidil oh yes minoxidil uh, which is a solution which you rub on your, on, and it's supposed to stop you going bald it doesn't work well of course it's it very doesn't. expensive yes. it, if it, if it well, worked it, if it worked people would use it we would have it and we would have thick hair yes. but it doesn't, it doesn't it's work it's supposed to delay it uh, yeah. in fact it does but it's pointless because it, it interferes with the way the follicles grow yeah don't bother just accept it and grow it shorter wear some high collars and some stylish get yourself a hat because you'll need that when you go out into the sun to stop yourself getting skin so cancer. Just do what I do and wear a hat all the time. Yes, Mr. Duncan. Never, yes, but that looks odd. No, it doesn't uh, look odd. Oh, it does when you're indoors. No, all the time it's wearing fine. A hat. This is yeah. my thing. It's become my thing now. So whenever my neighbours see me, they always see me with a hat. So they think. That, oh. So it, it gets you noticed. You Jordeo see. Jordeo says I'm using minoxidil. Well, I tried that and I spent a lot of money on it. Yes, well, and it George, George Ayer is already saying it doesn't work. Exactly. Yeah, it's it rubbish. Work. Because if it worked, we, we would use it. <laughs> you see? I'm not upset, Belarusia. I many uh, I was when it first started to happen, but uh, when I was in my early 20s. But uh, I spent several years. I got used to quite upset me, actually. Uh, but uh, not anymore. I got over it. When I started cutting my hair very short, and my people said to me, oh, why do you cut your hair so short? But I don't have to worry about because I don't have to worry about it anymore. No, that's it. If you've got dark skin, by the way, obviously being white, I've got very pale skin. <coughs> shaving your head, shaving your head completely uh, makes you look ill. Hmm. If you're dark skinned, then shaving your head completely can look very attractive uh, in a man. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So if you're black, for example, and you go bald, it's you're quite lucky because you, all you've got to do is shave your head. That's it. And it looks very, very cool, very trendy. But if you're white and you shave your head, it tends to look like you've... You've, you're on chemotherapy or this, something. This is one of the things... <laughs> I'm, I'm seriously always, ill. I'm always jealous of black guys because black guys can always look great with with no hair. Even if even if you lose your hair, you still look really super cool. So it doesn't matter. But but when, when white people lose their hair, they just go, he's lost his hair. But if, if a black guy, even if he shaves his hair off, you just go... Cool. Well, that's it. That's all they've got to do. And, cool. And it, because they don't have the white there and the dark there. It all looks a similar colour. Yes. Uh, so yes, maybe uh, maybe I just have a a fake tan, a high fake tan on all the time. I wish I was black. That actually would look that that actually would look better. So yes, accept it. Shave your hair. Shave your hair off, or just cut it very short, and uh, you'll be fine. That's my uh, it's it's easy to say that because I went through a period when I was quite upset about it. I didn't realize not anymore. I didn't realize we we're going to talk so much about baldness because you have some idioms for it. Not to do with baldness. No, fortunately, but although there are a lot of idioms to do with being bald, you can call someone baldy, slap head, uh, snooker ball head. So that maybe their head is very shiny, like a like a snooker ball, or a ball. That's helping uh, helping myself. Or uh, I can't remember the person's name now. It's gone off the screen. My favourite is slap uh, head. Yes. I think slap head it doesn't bother me anymore. Palmyra it doesn't bother me. I'm over it. Got slap, over it years ago. Slap head. I think that's my favourite. Anyway, Steve, let's let's put you. You're on not really helping, Mr. Duncan. Of course, I'm helping. If I wasn't helping, I'd be upstairs. No, Mr. Duncan, what you're doing is you're adding insult to injury. Oh, oh, oh. look at that! See how I got that in yeah, there, Mr. Very, Duncan. Very good. You can add insult to injury. You're getting good at this. So if you're already adding, you're adding a further loss or embarrassment to to something that's already happened. So, Mr. We were talking about being bald. Uh, and just talking about it can be upsetting for people who are losing their hair. OK. And then Mr. Duncan started using uh, words to describe baldness like slaphead. Slaphead is my favourite. snooker ball. So that's an example of adding insult to injury. You're already feeling injured, already feeling upset because we're talking about bald. And then Mr. Duncan uses a mocking phrase. So that adds insult to injury so you feel bad about something and yes. then someone says something else that's even worse that's so you, it. so first of all you feel bad and then they say something and then they just add insult to injury so that's what you did there you were talking about baldness and you said yes you can describe a bald person as a slaphead that's just adding insult yes. to injury that's making me feel even worse i'm already feeling bad Yes. That's making me feel worse. You're making a bad situation even worse. Uh, you can do it. You, say, say another example could be say you went for a job interview, and uh, with a company. Oh yeah. And uh, you 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 go for the job interview, and there is somebody interviewing you that you used to work with in a previous job. You didn't know they were going to interview you, and you do really badly in that job job interview. You're all and, but and it's it's bad enough that you. You've done badly in the job interview, but then the person that you used to know at work, who could have been, a, it was a rival, was actually interviewing you. So that's adding insult to injury. You're already feeling bad because you did, didn't did do very well in the interview. And then somebody that knows you is interviewing you and then they're going to tell everybody else. So that's adding insult to injury. Yes. Uh, so, yes. Another one. Another one. I'm looking for something that's relevant, Mr. Duncan. Well, you just go through them. It's it's not <laughs> it's not poetry. Barking up the wrong tree. Oh, yes. We, we often do that. Are you barking up the wrong tree? If you are, it means you're looking in the wrong place yes. or accusing the wrong person of something. Yes. You are going uh, you are going after the wrong thing. You are pursuing the wrong thing. You are mistaken. You are barking up the wrong tree. So somebody somebody comes up to you at work or anywhere uh, and says to you, oh, all right, yes, I hear you're uh, saw you out a lot with, uh, with with a certain person. 
uh, you were having a meal with them. Uh, you were seen uh, going to see a film together. Um, and, you know, what's going on? Are you having a relationship with that person? And you're not. So you might say to them, no, we're just friends. You're barking up the wrong tree. So they're trying to accuse you or trying to find out that you're having a relationship with somebody. But in fact, you're not. Uh, they're probably having a relationship with somebody else. So they're barking at you, uh, uh, thinking that it's you. And in fact, it's somebody else. They're barking up the wrong tree. Mm. Just like a dog is barking at, 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 a, at a tree and it's, it's the wrong tree. So they are, they are making, making the wrong assumption. Making the wrong assumption about something. Oh, yes, I like that word. Assumption. Barking up the wrong tree. If you assume something, it means you think something, you come to a conclusion in your mind, it is an assumption. Assumption. You're waiting for me, Mr. Duncan. I'm waiting for you. A penny for your thoughts, Mr. Duncan. Yes, I was A penny going, for your thoughts. I was about to say that to you. <laughs> you use this expression if you see somebody and... Uh, they seem to be deep in thought. They're not saying anything. They very seem to be thinking a lot. And, and, and you're probably quite... Uh, you like this person. You get on well with them. And uh, you want to know what's on their mind. Something could be troubling them. And so to break the ice, which is another idiom, uh, <laughs> but to try and encourage them to speak about what they're thinking about, you say, oh, penny for your thoughts... So you're, you're sort of trying to encourage them to tell you about what they're thinking about. So if you look very sort of upset, look sort of upset or are you, oh, Mr. Duncan, is everything all right? Penny for your thoughts. And then you tell me everything. So it's almost like you're, you're saying, I'll give you something if you tell me what's on your mind. What's the problem? A penny being, of course, is, is a coin. It's money. Yes. So you're sort of, oh, you know, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you some money if you just tell me what you, you know. It's a very you're almost bribing them in a way. Well, yes, it's just a friendly way of just saying. Just a friendly phrase. Just a friendly way of saying, what's on your mind? Yes. What's the problem? Penny for your thoughts. Back to the drawing board. Okay. Back to the drawing board. So you've been doing. So say you've been planning a holiday. And you want to go to a particular place. Say we wanted to go to Moscow on holiday. Oh, yes. You and I, we decided we were going to go to Moscow. Uh, and we were going to go to Russia because we wanted to find out uh, where those lovely Vostok watches are made. Uh, but we can't get a flight when our holiday. We've got two weeks off in June. That's when I can take my holiday. But we can't find flights uh, at that particular time, we can't find a hotel. Uh, so you have to scrap all your plans and, and do something else. So you'll say, oh, we can't go to Russia. Let's go back to the drawing board. Yes, we have which to means let's start over again. Start all over again. We have to look somewhere else to go on holiday. Forget instead. what I said. Forget it. Forget it. We can't do that. We have to go back to the drawing board. That's it. So you, you're planning to do something. You and it could be anything and it just doesn't work out so you have to start again and think up another way of doing it uh we're going back to the drawing board mm. so we could have thought about today's today's uh live lesson and you could have had all these plans about doing something well for example we could have said oh we'll plan to do a lesson outside mm. today we'll put the camera outside the table and everything um but then it starts to rain and you say, oh, we can't do that. Back to the drawing board. What should we do now? That's it. That's it. Do you know, you know, we have a mystery idiom today. Do we? I, I, I haven't seen I that. decided to do one just for a change. So there is today's mystery idiom. Ah. It is a well-known phrase in English. Whilst we are talking about idioms with Mr. Steve, because Mr. Steve is here today as we are every single Sunday for those who aren't sure you can catch us every single Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time every Sunday at 2 p.m. UK time another one burn the midnight oil oh okay burn the midnight oil that means 
that you're working very hard through the night. Well, it doesn't have to be literally through the night, but usually does refer to that, I think. It means that uh, you, you're working very hard it, during hours when people aren't usually working. Mm. Uh, so you literally could be uh, working when it's dark. It, it's an old-fashioned phrase referring to burning oil to keep the lights on so that you can carry on working. Yeah. Uh, so if you're working overtime or maybe longer than you should or if you are working through the night, yes. generally we can say that you are burning the midnight oil so sometimes mr duncan in preparing his live lesson for sunday will burn the midnight oil it's true on saturday and work very hard to get it ready uh, not yesterday though you didn't do that yesterday i did, did I, I was i was in here last night editing some of your jam sequences which we will be having a look at in a moment we will have a look at part three in a moment of mr steve's jam making that we did last year because you were busy in the kitchen this morning making this year's jam another one Steve well I, thankfully I didn't bite off more than I could chew <laughs> so if you bite off more than you can chew it means you take something take a task or, or a problem something to do which is beyond what you're capable of doing it's too much for you it's too hard for you it's uh, it's just way too big it could be a relationship you could uh, you could be in a relationship with somebody and uh, they're very demanding and uh, uh, you, you talk to a friend and you say oh blimey and they say to you oh how's it going now that you're going out with uh, with uh, Anna we'll call her Anna we don't mean Anna on the live on the live chat going out with Anna oh blimey she she I have to keep buying her presents I have to meet up with her at certain times she wants me to call her at a certain time every night uh, uh and somebody might your friend might say to you oh you've taken on more than you can uh chew with that one meaning that you know you, it's too much for you to cope with yes it also, could be a project at work so something that's more more than you expected so you bite off more than you can chew so it refers to something that you can't cope with you thought you could cope with it you thought you could handle it perfectly but it would appear that you bit off more than you could chew it may be that you need some training uh say somebody gives you a big project at work uh and uh, you, that, you're not is, coping with it is that bill uh, somebody might say uh, bill oh you've, you've you've bitten off more than you can chew uh trying to handle that client uh and but then with a bit of training you might be able to but usually it's something you can't cope with before we have the next one we are going to take a look at part three of mr steve's jam making because you were very busy this morning let's just have a look outside on the tree so here it is look look at look at that at the moment on the tree it's there not are... much different than it did the last time we looked mr duncan <laughs> well it doesn't know but there might be people who've just joined who don't know about your dams and tree and now they do well so there you go like there the is where you've got damson in the color of the damson yes that's clever isn't it yes very clever so damson cam not damson jam talking oh. of which we are now going to take a look at mr steve making his jam in the kitchen <laughs> And we are back with Mr. Steve's jam making extravaganza. Right. And and what exactly is going on here, Mr. Steve, right. at this moment? As you can see in here, it's cooking away. Now we've got to remove, can you see these? All these little stones have come to the top. And we've got to remove them all. There's a lot in there. You saw how many damsons there were. We, well, we don't have to remove them, but I like to remove them because you don't want to crunch into one of those. I've got a little quick method using this chip basket, and I'm just going to pour it into there and separate the stones out from the jam in that way. Now, it gets very messy, so stand back, Mr. Duncan, while I attempt to pour that through there. Can we see the mess it's making? There we go. 
and I don't want to get any splashes because this is very hot so I'll get my spoon where's my spoon there it is I want to keep the skins in as well because the skins I've got a lot of the goodness in so all you want to actually do all you're trying to do here Mr Steve is remove the hard stones that's it and look you can see them all separating out there I'm trying to force the, uh, the the skin through the bottom because I want to keep the skins in as much of the skin as I can there we go look a few escape they always do but that doesn't matter because we're going to give it a second pass through there we go all the stones are gone we put the, the fruit back in because we want to keep the fruit the skin because that's very healthy there's no clean way of making jam it's always very messy Who'd have thought that making jam would be so complicated? I thought it was just boil it and put it into the jars, but no, apparently it's a lot more complicated than that. Okay, Mr. Steve will do the same thing he did just, and we will rejoin Mr. Steve later when, if I'm not mistaken, we will be putting the jam into the jars, am I right? We will indeed. We've just got to boil it up now and then I'm going to use this thermometer because that tells me when the jam is ready, it's at the right setting point. So we'll come back to that a bit later. So when we say set, we mean the jam starts to go solid. So if something sets, if something is setting or if it has set, it means it has gone solid. Okay, this is the fun part now, isn't yes. it, Mr. Steve? This is right. the part we've all been waiting for. We are now we going to put the jam into the jar. Yes, the thermometer is telling us that the jam is ready. So now I've been sterilizing the jam jars in the oven because we don't want to get any contamination. So I think So these these jars are completely clean. So, so Mr. Steve has used heat to sterilize the jars. And now it really gets messy now, Mr. Duncan, because I have to pour it into there first. I've sterilized that as well. There we go. Whoa! That's very hot. And very messy. So here we go. We pour it into the jars. I love the noise it makes. A bit more than that one. a bit on the counter there, never mind. Whoa! Oh. Mr. Duncan is getting covered in red hot jam. These are old jam jars that we did buy that had jam in them. So I'm just reusing them. So all we have to do now is wait for the jam to cool down and the lids will actually make a small clicking noise. So you will know that the jam is sealed in the jars. One pot of homemade damson jam. I've got to clean this mess up now. Are you going to help me, Mr. Duncan? It's on the floor, it's on the countertop, it's all up the walls, it's everywhere. Uh, I'm not making any next year, this is the last time. So there it is, the finished product. We have some lovely, delicious, fresh, homemade 
Damson Jam. Mmm, and believe me, it tastes delicious. Sunday afternoon it's live English on YouTube it's Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve with just another 15 minutes and then we will go but don't worry we will be back of course next Sunday for those who are wondering every Sunday you can catch us live on YouTube and of course for those who haven't been notified and I have a feeling it's quite a few people many people in fact maybe over half a million people haven't been told that I am producing some new lessons and they will be available every Wednesday so there will be a new lesson produced every Wednesday Mr Steve is back and I must admit I'm enjoying the idioms today oh, I'm very pleased Mr Duncan I hope other people are too I do like them do you want me to give you another one in a moment we'll have a quick look at the live chat we haven't looked at it for a few moments so here is the live chat now someone asked if you sterilize the jars oh Anna uh, yes I do so you sterilize them you put them in the oven I put them in the oven uh, for about half an hour at about somewhere between 80 and 100 degrees so I don't put them in too hot because uh, I put the lids in as well. If you, I, I've discovered that if you if you if it's too hot, the the uh, the, the the lids uh, tend to go a bit strange because they've got. Mm. Uh, I'm reusing uh, lids from jam that we bought from the shop, and which yeah. has a little bit of, has a little circle of rubber inside uh, to seal the the top of the of the lid onto the jar. Do you want to so, uh, get one of the, the the jars? Not the new one, but you, you get one to show now. I can do. Yeah, let's go All on. All right then. Isn't it exciting? So Mr. Steve's going to get one of the big jar. Get that big jar, the really big one. <laughs> Steve makes very large jars of jam. They're huge. And last year he made a lovely selection of jams. Some of them had damson and others had damson and apple. And they <gasps> Oh, that particular jam is delicious, by the way. So Steve is bringing in some jam. Oh, I did say bring some jam, but oh, Steve's right, okay. Got the jars. Well, I thought you said bring the jam jar. The jam. Mm. Ah. The jars, you say. Don't take the jars. This is going well. Do you like this? It's all live. So these are the jars that Mr. Steve uses. So he normally puts these in the oven first to sterilize them so they are nice and clean and once the jam is made oh look at that <gasps> there it is so I I guess this one is warm so I guess you made warm. this is this one you made today yes Ooh. I still I don't take the labels off uh, because mm. they don't always come off oh don't tip it Mr Duncan because uh, it's got to stay level until it's set because mm. <laughs> it'll all go in on the inside of the lid and I don't want that Mr. Okay, Duncan. Then. Okay, then. So yes, so that that was a honey jar of honey. I was going to shake it and uh, I haven't I haven't taken the label off because labels on jam jars when you bought some jam from the shop all you had to do years ago was soak them in water and the labels would come off but they don't anymore they just stick on they just keep they, it's very difficult to get the labels off off jam jars now in the uk uh for bought jam from a supermarket because they stick it on with very powerful glue now. do you know why they do that no to stop people from tampering with the food in the supermarket so people can't remove the labels and change the labels so they they, they are stuck on very firmly i think i think that's the reason anyway this is a this is a very old fashioned uh, jam jar that you buy from uh, from hardware stores uh, for putting jam in. It's called a kilner jar, yes. and you can reuse these year after year. And uh, they have uh, removable lids like that with a little rubber, 
and uh, you heat it up, put your jar in, and you can keep those year after year after year. The only trouble is when you've opened them, the jam goes off sometimes before you finish. Mm. So I reuse uh, ones from from jam bought from the supermarket. This is great. I love the size of this. You can you can put a lot of jam in here. And also this particular jar is very useful if you have to catch a spider. So if you have to catch a spider, you can put the jar over the spider and catch it. <laughs> That's Pedro it. wants me to visit different places every week. Uh, I think that's the idea behind what you want to do with the, isn't it? You want me to visit different places every week. Yes, I'm not. I'm not sure what I'm going to do at the moment about that. Now, Mika, talking of visiting places, Mika was in Ireland, and Mika has left a message. If I had time to visit you, whilst I was in Ireland, I would. But I enjoyed the Guinness. Ah. Oh, Guinness is a very popular drink uh, at the pub. And also I had fish and chips. I also visited the beautiful cathedrals in Dublin. Oh, I know where you were now. OK, then that's great. I hope you had a great time. I've been to the, uh, the, the did you go around the Guinness factory in uh, in Dublin? Because I've been around there. Uh, it's uh, if you if you like beer, it's quite and, and you're interested in how beer is made. It's quite a good trip. Mm. Um, interesting that you say that Mika had a hot cross bun. Yes, uh, because it's not the time of the year that you normally get them. I would imagine in Ireland because they are very religious and uh, maybe there are places that serve or maybe sell the hot cross buns all the time. Well, it's supposed to be Easter, but anyway, mm. maybe they do. Yes. We catch spiders sometimes with those jars. They are very useful for catching spiders and large insects. I think so. So let's have a look at some more of Mr. Steve's super duper idioms for today. Last straw. Ah, I like this one. The last straw. Steve uses this one with me quite often. Sometimes, Mr. Duncan, you are the last straw. It means uh, some, that, that during that maybe a lot of things have gone wrong, and then uh, you've you've put up with lots of things going wrong, and then one final thing happens, and that's just too much for you to cope with, mm. and you describe that particular event as the last yes. straw. So. so for, no. Oh, so for example, if you were trying to get to work, say you had to get to work for nine o'clock, but you got up late, you overslept, you were rushing, uh, you got in your car and uh, you forgot your keys, uh, and then you were, there was no fuel, not enough fuel in the car to get to work, and then you then you were stuck in traffic, uh, and so all these things were happening, and then the last straw, you actually ran into another car as well you had yes. an accident on the way to work you would say that's just the last straw yes <coughs> excuse me mr Duncan. is that is that part of the idiom oh that's the last do you, straw. do you say the last straw and then sneeze <laughs> no it's it's a that's... lot of things have gone wrong and then one other thing happens and that's it you you, you just don't want to do anything else it's the last straw that's the last straw <coughs> Can you think of, do you have, did you have an example, Mr. Duncan? I did. Uh, well, maybe something that you are putting up with. So if you are putting up with something, maybe a person's bad behaviour. Yes. So that that's what I was saying with you and me. So sometimes I can be very annoying. You might not believe it, but I can be very annoying. And, and Mr. Steve is very good. He can put up with my annoying habits. But sometimes he will say, Mr. Duncan, I can't do it. Do this anymore. I, I don't mind your bad behavior. But but the thing you did today, that is the last straw. Well, I ne I've never said that to you. But if you were in a relationship with somebody and they kept saying they kept being late when they met you, then they forgot your birthday and then uh, and, and they didn't they didn't treat you very well. And this went on for a period of time. And then maybe you found out they were having an affair with somebody uh, or it could be something simple like they just, you know, they agreed you agreed to meet somewhere at a restaurant and they didn't turn up. You might say, right, that's the last straw. 
this relationship is over yeah. so normally it comes from a habit so a person's habit or the things they do and you 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 can cope mm. with it you accept it you say okay okay i will give you another chance i will give you another chance and another chance mm. and then one day you say no this time it's the last straw it's over it, it relates to i believe it relates to the other expression the straw that broke the camel's back so i think it actually it might relate to that it might you can't judge a book by its cover sometimes you can don't or don't judge uh, a book by its cover it means uh outward appearances can sometimes be deceptive uh, or might not give you the true picture so if you looked looked at a cover of a book you might think oh, well that's got a boring cover on, on it and then you might not bother to read the book but in fact the book was it could have been extremely interesting mm. or it could be referred, referred to a person you might look at that person and say well they don't dress very well you know doesn't look, doesn't look like they've washed or something like that but then when you get talking to them you actually discover that underneath they're actually very interesting person so don't judge them by uh what they might look like on the outside they might actually be a very interesting person although you might find that when it comes to people you are probably right a lot of the time so may so maybe a person who looks a bit dangerous or bad or evil or wicked so may, maybe you can judge them in a way that might be negative you might think oh they don't look very good they don't look like a safe person to be with so but they might be lovely underneath underneath they might be a lovely kind person it normally refers to people doesn't it when you yes talk quite about often expression so don't judge the book by its cover don't look at something and make a judgment assumptions about it straight away find out some more facts see if you are see if it is correct <laughs> so that's that expression i like blue thunder blue thunder has a good example i can't stay with you anymore this is the last straw yep that's ah, it mr steve has said that many times one more <laughs> here it oh i'm not on don't worry hear it on the grapevine there's a famous song of course i heard i heard it on the grapevine I hope do you remember do, do, do. marvin gay right this is rumors uh, about something or someone so it's whispers in the corridors people gossiping really and you might say well i heard it on the grapevine that john is going out with jill ah yes is that true and it's people whispering to each other and gossiping uh i heard it on the grapevine that there's going to be redundancies at work so some colleague said something to you heard it from somebody else it's just sort of whispers gossips isn't that right mr that Duncan? is true yes so if you heard it on the grapevine it is something you heard from another person it might be true it mm. might not be not been confirmed yes so something that has not been confirmed you might also say that rumors or a rumor so something that you heard on the grapevine it yeah i heard it i i will tell you what it is but it might not be true yes you might want confirmation so you might go to somebody and say oh hello uh, hello mika i heard it on the grapevine that uh, you've got a new boyfriend what and uh, it, 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 you know you you're sort of trying to find information we, we agreed out. we agreed uh, that we wouldn't but, use uh, up talking <laughs> well we, i haven't finished yes but i i haven't finished either <laughs> we, we, I thought we agreed that we weren't going to use real names on the examples. Sorry, Mika. I heard it on the grapevine that well, somebody let, let's just call them Bill. Anna. Bill. <laughs> it's always Bill. Let's just call them Pedro. <laughs> has, 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 has got a new partner. It's not uh, got a new girlfriend. A new girlfriend. Oh. That would be a turn up in the, in the, in the books. That would be amazing. And there's another idiom a turn up for the books. Okay. You have, have you got that written down no a turn up for the books something that appears and it, it's quite surprising sergio Ooh. has asked do you use those expressions in everyday life these ones yes i've picked ones that people do use a lot 
in everyday life. These are very common expressions, idioms that people use. Mm. And we do use them all the time. Oh, that's just the last straw. We're not... Uh, we're not just picking up any old, using any old idioms. No, these, these are, ones, are ones that people really do use. Yes, they are used. Talking of which, before we go, here is the answer to today's mystery idiom. We have a mystery idiom. Did you get it right? I think one or two people did guess the mystery idiom right. But what is it? Here's the answer. It is stick in the mud. Stick in in the mud so you might describe a person as being a stick in the mud a person who does not want to join in with something fun and exciting this person might be described as being a stick in the mud a person who is dull and boring and doesn't want to get involved with things that are fun and exciting like my live stream for example my live stream is always fun and exciting so don't be a stick in the mud join us next sunday for another live stream <laughs> we're going <laughs> we are going in a moment we are we, yes we are going it's we've been for almost an hour on air almost you, an hour because i started late if you just if people don't want to go to if people don't want to go to a party uh, you can describe them as a stick in the mud doesn't mm. mean there's anything wrong anything wrong with that uh, you know, they just like to stick to their ways. Yes, they, they are a stick in the mud. They are a bit dull and boring. But things are never dull and boring around here. One last look at the live chat before we go. Ah, Mika says that her mother bought hot cross buns at Tesco's. And ah, that's it. So maybe the supermarkets yes. still will sell hot cross buns. Yes, you can hear. Easter. Yes, you can hear as well. In England, you can find hot cross buns are always for sale, but they are only really popular during Easter. That's right. Uh, also, we have. G oh, Jeff is here now. Jeff. Oh, we didn't see you, Jeff. Oh, Jeff watching hello, in Jeff. Jeff in the USA. Thank you very much. The live streams are always fun. Please tell all your friends in America about our live streams. We want we want lot of lot more uh, viewers in America, uh, Jeff. So please tell everybody. We are desperate. We're trying to spread out. We're trying to break America. Desperate. We're not desperate. We are. We're desperate. Look, trust me. We're desperate. I am desperate. I am desperate, Duncan. That's what they call me now. They say that Duncan is so desperate. And so if you want to tell your friends in the United States that there's a lovely English man with his not so lovely friend. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mr. Duncan. Please tell them and it would be lovely to see you here and we can teach you English. We can talk about anything. You can talk about anything within reason, something nice, something happy, something serious from time to time. So there, Gretel. Thank you, Gretel. I heard it on a grapevine that this company is in ruins. Yep, that's a good example. Yeah, something you've heard or overheard. A party pooper can be a stick in the mud. You are right. Yes, thank you very much for that, Tomek. We are going now, Steve. It's How sad. It's time to say goodbye. Goodbye to Mr. Steve and Mr. Duncan. So thanks, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Duncan, and see you all next Sunday. We I shall be here. We will see you next week, of course. For those who aren't sure, you can catch us live every Sunday from 2 p.m. 2 o'clock UK time. Don't forget to check the time. So wherever you are, check the difference. There is a difference in the time. Maybe you are ahead or maybe you are behind. So please check it out and then you will never be late for the live stream thanks steve we'll see you later thanks for your special report from moscow maybe next week steve will be somewhere else so it might be a new feature it could well be we could do this every week mr steve could be somewhere famous or well known where will mr steve be next week Ooh, i can't wait to find out and of course until the next time we meet here on youtube from mr steve it's Ta-ta for now. And from me, Mr. Duncan, in the birthplace of the English language, I will also see you next Sunday. Don't forget, there is also a new lesson 
coming up on Wednesday as well. That is something we are doing from now on. A new lesson every Wednesday. And of course, until the next time we meet right here on YouTube. Ta-ta for now.